Hi, this is my review of AMP Year 3. AMP Year 3 is an expansion for the AMP role-playing game. That is, it's a continuation of AMP Year 1 and AMP Year 2. This expansion advances the timeline. It provides a lot of background information, all the relevant details of what has been going on, and it also adds uh, new powers and three new types of characters, or rather three new ways in which you can customize your characters. Because you, you, have, the, uh, you have mutants in the form of the rampagers, you also have the twice born, and you have the resistor suits, which are awesome. They're kind of like power armor. So let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality is pretty good. Everything is well written and organized. I just found a few typos, nothing major. So just uh, like a missing letters and such. I'm going to uh, send those typos uh, to uh, Eloy La Santa in case he wants to update this document in the future. And you have bookmarks, you have awesome looking illustrations. However, the illustrations uh, are somewhat not as consistent as I would have liked them to be because some of them look really cool. But let me show you a few of them here. Uh, these are uh, somewhat too cartoony in my opinion when compared uh, to the rest of the art. Not, it doesn't have that amp feeling to them in my opinion. And uh, some of the non-player characters, the returning non-player characters, look uh, somewhat different from uh, the other expansions. For example, here's Conduit from Amp Amp Year One. And this is Conduit in Amp Year Three. He looks very different. It looks like he gained a couple of, well, <laughs> to say at least a few pounds. And his nose looks really weird. So I don't know if that has to do with the story, but I don't like the way uh, he looks in Amp Year Three. Well, now let's talk about the content. I'm going to avoid spoilers because the way the information is presented in Amp Year 3 is just really good to build entire campaigns around events in the different months of, of the Year 3. So I will just talk about the general feeling of the setting of the sorts of events that have been going on and that will happen in, in the future of Amp so you could get a general grasp of the situation. The information is highly detailed. I'm quite surprised each month gets a, a lot of uh, background details on uh, how things have been going on of the, of the different conflicts. So for example, something that is quite noticeable in Amp Year 3 is that there is a certain bleakness or uh, moodiness to the setting overall. Uh, despite all the chaos and all of that, it seems like uh, things do not have a, a happy ending, that the, there is not a, a possibility of some positive conclusion, but uh, this is not so. There are like uh, glimmers of hope, and that, that makes a really nice contrast, in my opinion, because, for example, the government control uh, has been uh, absurd, uh, too tyrannical over the AMP setting uh, and that uh, makes for a lot of uh, interesting opportunities for adventures, for problem solving. It has come to, to a point where you can get arrested just because you are a, an AMP, just because you have superpowers. And uh, they're, they're even trying to push an act that allows them to, to, to see if a baby <laughs> before being born is going to turn out as an AMP. Is, is, so you basically can get detained before even being born, so that's that's absurd and that's part of the conflict of AMP Year 3. There is a very strong anti-AMP attitude. There is also a sense of, um, let's say, post-apocalyptic disaster because some humans have actually committed suicide uh, writing uh, sort of like a creepy legend that it says and for man, there was nothing left. So they, they feel like humans have no place in this world because AMP are being born. But these are actually just a few um, scenarios or uh, tragic events that the different uh, organizations that are anti-AMP, such as the UHF or uh, Track and, and Hounds, have been uh, taking advantage of them and magnifying them so that the AMP appear as a big threat. And with the appearance of Rampagers, which has, are basically... Uh, monstrous amps 
the, the UHF have tried to portray themselves as heroes, as champions of justice. They have brought out these resistor suits that look awesome and uh, they are fighting against these rampagers and they have been bringing out, uh, for example, uh, comic books and video games and, and uh, TV shows, uh, commercials, etc. They're portraying themselves like the superheroes that will defeat these uh, horrible rampagers. And uh, uh, so it's all about pushing their agenda. Uh, however, there are some wielders of the resistor suits that have actually uh, uh, become allies with the amps and they fight to protect not only humans but amps as well. So uh, there is, uh, as I was telling you, there's constant glimmers of hope of people trying to work together, recognizing that there is not a clear side that you cannot divide like, oh, this one's red and this one's blue. These are the good guys. These are the bad guys. Uh, let's fight it out. Uh, like there are good guys and bad guys in each of the factions. And speaking of the uh, rampagers, they're actually, as well as victims uh, of a certain disease, of, of a mutation. So there's actually a way to, to heal them and perhaps even bring some of them to reason while, while being uh, mutated. So it's not as easy as let's kill all the rampagers. And when it comes to the amps, they are trying to make their best. They have even created new uh, groups or, uh, or well, that are quite relevant for these dark times, such as the Ages. And they are the, the protectors of both uh, mankind and amps. And there, there's even like um, uh, a very important event in uh, Ground Zero in the timeline where there is like an all out war where all of the factions are basically duking it out and they are making allies and enemies on the fly. So one moment they are uh, have become allies with this faction and the other moment they are now fighting against each other and it's just complete mayhem. It is only with the death of certain people in places of power that things start to um, achieve a certain degree of order that uh, different leaders start to to make a, make a positive alliances so that they can sort things out, that they can target the, the true threat. And all of this background information is uh, presented quite well. Uh, by the end of, of the book, you will have a, a firm grasp of how things are going to end up if a uh, change isn't uh, taken, if the per player characters aren't going to put their effort into changing things and it's it just like uh, it feels like it's an entire uh, source of, of campaigns and campaigns running around all of these different events so for example maybe your characters want to become uh, bodyguards for the lion of africa who's trying to achieve a world peace or maybe they are uh, typhoon uh, kind of like mobsters try trying to uh, thrive and, and uh, take advantage of the chaotic situation uh, by selling drugs and such. Or maybe um, you want to handle it, the UHF not as villainous, but perhaps there are some uh, few of the UHF members that are actually fighting to protect uh, humans and they couldn't care less of amps. So uh, you can uh, play with shades of gray in this uh, world of, of contrast. And uh, something that I also really like is that the information is presented uh, quite open and flexible. So for example, if you have been playing uh, many campaigns in uh, Ampere 1 and, and Year 2 and certain non-player characters died or certain uh, major events happened in unexpected ways, you could fit all of that into the timeline. It's going to be no trouble at all. It's also quite entertaining to see how many of the non-player characters of Year 1 and Year 2 have returned. Some have changed uh, for the better. Some mothers are somewhat uh, in a bit of a dilemma according to their values and how things have happened. I, I also found it quite, quite interesting how the orphans returned and they feel like these angels of destruction, but they, they also feel quite alien with a somewhat of a holier-than-thou attitude and they're also a, a, big, a major threat. You could play a campaign of the UHF against them because um, the... The new orphans aren't really on, on anybody's side. They have their own thing going on. So, so it's just a, virtually an, an infinity of adventures contained in the detailed timeline. And um, later on, they give you even more details on all of the factions and all of the situation. Also, that I, I, I thought that um, they did a really good job on giving you enough information to have campaigns in any part of the world. Of course, these are only uh, 136 pages, so it's um, 
quite understandable why they couldn't go into further details this is more on the uh, american side of things of the entire continent but if you want to play a campaign let's say in europe or in asia you have information uh, to do that it's not as detailed but it's there you even have a very nice guide on how to handle the themes and the moods of amp year three maybe you want to handle things like a sort of like a war zone or maybe you want to focus on the rise of the heroes because you have all the details to develop stories around the different factions such as the Aegis Squad or you have story hooks concerning them and affiliation bonuses concerning all of the factions and some of the factions have revised affiliation bonuses because of the changes in the storyline you have information on new factions such as Atlantis which is kind of like a, a nation formed of uh, let's say water friendly amps and, and humans they feel kind of like uh, have like an Aquaman sort of vibe to them. You also have information on the Mystics and Typhoon. You also have information on new gifts. Uh, this will allow you to create uh, characters that are more customized for year three. And some of the uh, new things here uh, work uh, with the mutations and the resistor suits and the twice born, which I'll get into a minute. So you have new gifts such as the um, Enriched Blood, Play Dead, Resistor Suit Tricks. It has to do with the new type of characters. You also have new drawbacks like uh, Energy Hog related to the Resistor Suit, a glitchy component, um, Mark of the Other World. You have new cerebral, cerebral drawbacks such as Amnesia, Death Wish, uh, Lunacy, uh, Schizophrenia. And now, before we talk about the new powers, let's talk about the Twice Born. The Twice Born are kind of like undead, that is people that were uh, came out of their graves, but they are not like zombies. They, they almost look alive, but they have a really cold skin and they are quite difficult to kill. Uh, it is possible to kill them. In fact, there is like a, a sect that actually does some weird ritual to kill them. But uh, for the most part, they are quite difficult to, to uh, completely eliminate. They go into this like this like a death dance, it's called. It's kind of like an otherworldly trance. And they actually gain knowledge from that. And because they are not technically alive, they're actually immune to poison, disease, etc. And you have all the rules on how to create those types of characters. The, the new characters are the uh, absorption uh, tree of, of powers. And the enhancements of absorption has to do with uh, manipulating properties of different materials and using them for your own for example you could have use steel or you could have like a fly paper type of skin or uh, you could be a multi-shifter mm, everything about uh, taking some material and absorbing its qualities and uh, using it to your advantage and you also have other powers such as uh, aquatica which is basically like um, using water themed powers like um, uh, you have suction cups to hold things in, in, in different parts of your skin and uh, float some and jet some. You have wave clap and the wave clap you would think oh that's only useful underwater but you can do usually um, you could use it to manipulate the air around you like clapping really hard and creating like sort of like a shock wave. You also have other powers such as bilocation which is basically like being at two places at the same time. You also have grace, which is um, affecting others that look at you. So you have uh, augments such as obsession, captivate, universal appeal. You also have uh, ice, which has to do with uh, uh, ice elemental attacks, obviously, like uh, black ice, deep freeze, icicles. You also have jinx, which is uh, manipulating bad luck with curses, hexes, evil eye. You also have legion, and legion feels like a set of of abilities that um, are more for experienced players because you basically have like multiple personalities or more multiple identities so to speak so you get to change skills and powers so you have uh, powers such as uh, augments uh, like out of my head uh, welcome to my minds i got powers too etc you also have another power which is madness which causes madness of course you have things like uh, mental static uh, delusions mind storm you also have negation, which is about uh, canceling out other the abilities of other uh, amps, of uh, neutralizing their abilities to use juice. Uh, so you have neutralizing touch, block attraction, power suppression, etc. My favorite power is Road Warrior, and this is perfect. If you want to create like a Mad Max sort of character. You basically bond with a vehicle. 
So you have enhancements such as um, at my beck and call, which you can basically summon your vehicle. You can pretty much teleport a vehicle near you, but it could fail and you could actually teleport the vehicle somewhere else. And you're going to be like, hey, this isn't where I parked my car, <laughs> kind of like that. But you also have other things that are quite self-explanatory, self such as uh, water wheels, uh, impossible jump, vertical highway. So the powers are really cool. And the resistor suit, uh, which is for sap or normal humans, is handled like a new power. So you don't feel like you're handling some sort of complicated vehicle. It feels more like a power. So you have all the details, details to customize this suit uh, with details on degradation, energy, and um, different ways to customize it with software and uh, uh, components. So for example, you could have a mobile intelligence database or a cybernetic autonomous control software components like uh, discharge capacitors, a cryodiffuser, electromagnetic repulsor, and you can equip your suit with different types of close combat and range combat weapons. Uh, you, have, you can use propulsion systems, stealth enhancements, etc. Now when it comes to mutations, the more mutations that you have, the, the crazier you start, you start to become. So that's really dangerous, but at the same time it's going to be quite fun to roleplay a mutant so even though you, you have a chance to get awesome powers uh, and look quite monstrous, uh, your character will start to, to become corrupted. You have all, all, details, all the details concerning malformations. They could be just cosmetic. Maybe your arms are too long or you have like tentacle hair or uh, you have slimy skin. And you have different malformations that usually represent some sort of, of penalty. Maybe you're really hungry. Maybe, maybe you need to eat human flesh constantly. Or maybe you're sickly or too sensitive, uh, maybe you have disproportioned arms and legs and you have difficulty performing different tasks, physical tasks. Uh, maybe you look, uh, you're fast aging, that is you uh, get old really quick. Or maybe you have problems controlling your rage. There are many different uh, debilitating malformations, but uh, well, one cool thing, and this could be handled uh, sort of like with the uh, GM Trust, is the Rampager form. And it's basically when your mutant becomes exceedingly monstrous and obviously quite powerful, quite lethal, but you're in danger of becoming a non-player character. So if you don't have a cure handy, because there is a cure for these mutations, uh, you could end up becoming a non-player character. But if your GM allows it, you could basically play like in a rampager form for a bit if you wanted to. And... Uh, well, it sounds quite negative uh, to play as a mutant, but because of your deviations, you are going to be quite handy in different situa situations. For example, maybe you can absorb attacks from your enemies. You have like, a, let's say, like a blob-like body, and you could even like swallow your enemies. Or and maybe you can have, you can have different anomalies that uh, give you advantages performing different tasks. And so, for example, you have blood sacrifice that you can, at the expense of your health, you can actually power up. Uh, your ramp abilities and powers. There are many ways in which you can tweak your uh, powers so that they become uh, more effective. And maybe you have paranormal senses, or maybe you have enhanced resistance, natural toughness, etc. At the end of the book, you have a list of non player characters. Most of them uh, play a very significant role in the setting. And it's going to be quite fun to play as them or just have them uh, appear uh, to uh, serve as allies or enemies for the player characters. They have all the background information, all their details and stats. You could even uh, base campaigns around a specific non-player character if you wanted to. So for example, who is the mysterious Mama Winter? Or maybe you want to uh, help uh, the Aegis squad uh, in their uh, quest to achieve uh, peace and protect others, etc. You also have a very well-organized index to navigate the entire PDF. Now, let me tell you what I think of AMP Year 3. I think, well, it, this is a really fun expansion. All of the options, the resistor suits, because I love power armor, I love it. And the, the new mutations and the twice born, they're going to give you more options to create interesting characters. And uh, the entire timeline is, is quite exciting, filled with problems and uh, all sorts of uh, political and social issues and, and all-out all war. And, and that's very good uh, for a role-playing game expansion because the more trouble that is presented, the more opportunities the characters have to solve things. But I actually think that AMP Year 3 has uh, quite a bit of an educational value to it. 
All of this is fiction, but it's obviously inspired in real world events. You're going to see some political situations and law related situations, etc. That serve as, as parallels to, to what is happening in this year, in, in 2016. But Ampere 3 deals with uh, 2017. So it, it's sort of like um, a very exaggerated, uh, superheroic or, or super villainous, perhaps, a way in which things could turn out if, if people had superpowers. And it makes you think of, of how we are experiencing life. And I think that the most ins important message of Ampere 3 is that against the fear and the mistrust that happens in the world, uh, hope is the way to counterbalance that, to, to bring some sense or an, an order where there is chaos, or perhaps even chaos when there is an excess of order. So uh, I think that Ampere 3 is a pretty good game because it, it's fun. Uh, that is a pretty good expansion. It's fun because it um, presents all these cool options that are quite consistent when cons comparing them with the things presented in year one and year two. But at the same time, it, it makes you think of, of life and of the important things. So I highly recommend that you get Amp Year 3. If you've been playing Amp, well, this is a must-have, of course. But those that do not know what Amp is, uh, you should definitely uh, try Amp. I'm going to put some links in the description below with, of my other Amp reviews. So Amp Year 3, uh, a very cool expansion. And it makes you wonder if things are going to go further with, it, with Amp. The Amp universe is turning out quite well, quite solid and exciting. Well, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.